Hey Regen, uh, Mark here again. Um, as we ended our Sunday series on 3rd John, um, I think we can all resonate with John's final closing uh, more and more with every week that goes by. And that is, instead of text messaging, uh, these elder check-in videos and everything, um, we long and hope for the day to uh, see you face to face and to talk to you in person. Um, and although I wish for us to um, see each other again, um, I also hope that we don't come out of this uh, season unchanged. Um, for an analogy, imagine the life of the very hungry caterpillar. Uh, we all know that book. Um, and imagine that after all that he ate, including those uh, bad nutritionally deficient uh, choices, and then finally returning to the branch and getting what his soul really needed. Um, I hope you're envisioning this spiritual analogy with me. Um, but after this exciting uh, food adventure, um, he shelters in place in his little cocoon um, for some time and then he works and he pushes his way out and as the book says out pops a caterpillar that's not what the book says but imagine if he went in a caterpillar went in as a caterpillar uh, and came out as a caterpillar um, now we all know how the story really ends and if you know a thing or two about butterflies um, that's really just the beginning of a greater journey um, so for today's check-in, I want to encourage us to practice paying attention. Uh, paying attention to uh, ourselves, uh, paying attention to this cocoon, so to speak, that we are, we're in right now. Um, I have two practices uh, this week. I'm just going to talk about one. But those two practices uh, is inviting the Holy Spirit to pay attention to our souls first, and then uh, secondly, paying attention to the soul's uh, in our neighborhood or in our community. Um, and by doing this, we're no longer Jesus spectators uh, watching on the sidelines, uh, but we get to participate in the redemption of the world and our community and our neighborhood. Um, and by no means uh, am I suggesting, suggesting that I, I do this practice well. Um, the more that I do this uh, personal, private time, um, the more I do this with uh, my, my, my uh, home group or with friends, um, I realize how much I, I need this type of practice um, of returning uh, to Jesus. Uh, but this is uh, by no means a quick fix. Uh, we're here for this long journey of abiding in Jesus day by day. Um, so I invite you to participate and, and practice uh, this with me. Um, today I'm going to talk about the first practice and then in a couple weeks I'll, I'll come back and I'll share the second practice. Um, but first I want to encourage you to start paying attention to your own soul. Um, when, when I speak of your soul in the biblical sense, uh, I'm speaking of your nefesh and the Hebrew, this is the Hebrew word for soul. Um, or really simply, it, it speaks of your entire being, uh, all your strengths and all your weaknesses and limitations. Um, we see this in Genesis 2, 7, and it reads, And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living soul or a living nafesh. Uh, so this is uh, the word soul or nafesh uh, speaking of our entire being, um, our heart, our desires, our mind, our appetites, uh, our emotions. Uh, it's uh, our entire being. So when you practice this, uh, this uh, it would be helpful to put aside some private time um, and dedicate some time uh, with the Lord in this um, 
but you may also end up having to do this uh, kind of on the fly and noticing when you notice you're going through some kind of emotion and what you're going to be asking yourself is how is my soul um, you may go about answering this question by taking a few breaths uh, taking pause and locating where you are and once we locate where we are we can then um, and this uh, takes discipline um, but we can then turn to the truth of the gospel to fight the lies and the deceit of the evil one um, so for example um, you may feel loved which is great or you may feel reject rejected and if that's the case uh, you can turn to the truth of the gospel and in God's word it says in 1st Peter 2 4 that I am chosen and that I am precious. I'm not rejected. Um, at times, uh, we may feel close to God. Again, great. Uh, but sometimes, we may be feeling far off from God. Uh, but in Ephesians 2.13, uh, it reminds us that although we were once far off, uh, we have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. Or maybe we're having a hard time uh, being gracious and instead finding ourselves being impatient. Um, we can again turn to the truth of the gospel that God is rich in mercy. And even though we were dead in our trespasses, uh, we were made alive together with Christ's saving grace. And we see that in Ephesians 2, 4 through 5. So again, if we're feeling loved or feeling close with the Lord, uh, we have an overflow of graciousness, that's awesome, that's good. And whatever that win may be, uh, that should be shareable. We should be able to share that joy and let it be heard uh, with our friends and with our community so that we can be a testimony to God's goodness. Uh, but if our soul, uh, we are locating and naming struggles and weaknesses, um, that should also be shareable with our community. Um, but we can also invite the Holy Spirit to renew us uh, with the truths of the gospel. I'm reminded of a couple Psalms. Uh, Psalm 51, uh, it says, Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my inequity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And then Psalm 42, speaking of uh, locating where our soul is and, and uh, putting our trust in the gospel. Uh, Psalm 42 reads, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. So I encourage you to practice this soul check-in with me. And at least for me, especially during these times, uh, in the past couple weeks even, I'm so bent uh, to uh, run out, to put out fire after fire. Um, and so being able to locate my soul and to uh, sit down and uh, spend time with the Lord and to share this with my community has been uh, very helpful. In, in my journey, in my, my walk with the Lord. Uh, so pray for me in that. Uh, I would, I would uh, appreciate that. Um, you can also let me know how I can pray for you uh, as you go through this practice. Um, and uh, reach out to your brothers and sisters. Uh, continue to gather and continue to encourage and pray for another. Um, ask each other, uh, how is your soul? How is your entire being, um, and how can I pray for you uh, if you are struggling with anything? So in another couple, in a couple weeks, um, I'll be back with another elder check-in, uh, and we'll practice paying attention to your neighbors. And I'm going to end with with this uh, couple verses from Matthew 22 that we all know. Um, when Jesus is asked about the greatest commandment. And Jesus replies, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. 
this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbors as yourself. Uh, so, Regent, have a, have a good week. Uh, may the Lord uh, bless you and keep you.